welcome back first ever video podcast for the yeah. startups today we have omid kadiri in here kadiri am i saying that kadiri. right absolutely you think i i've known this guy for a few years i think i could say yeah. it right already omid is a vlogger social media everything skits music he's got his video production company very excited to have Omid here today. Thank you so much for coming, Omid. I've been looking forward to this interview for a while now. Thanks, Thank man. You, sir. I appreciate it. That was a really hyped intro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a uh, vlogger, did you say? Absolutely. <laughs> Trust me. We have a multitude of topics we're going to get through with Omid today. So, Obviously, I want to start off with the beginning. Like I said before, we were talking about how I want to get uh, an origin and introduce you to our viewers who don't know you and kind of know your story. And you were telling me that you started your intro into getting into film and acting right after high school. Yeah. So can you tell us what exactly made you think about getting into acting? If anything that inspired you, something you got involved in, someone else you saw doing something similar? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, I mean, going back, it kind of all started with, with basketball. Okay. Ooh. And, uh, you know just dreaming about playing in the NBA, seeing Michael, <laughs> seeing all these guys like Kobe and Shaq and all these guys doing mm-hmm. not only ball, but then they got into, you know, movies. Absolutely. Um, and then actually when I was 15, I wrote, uh, I had like a, like a journal. Okay. I used to write and nice. um, I wrote three things that I wanted to be. One was uh, NBA player, which was the first thing. And then the second one was um, being an actor. Mm-hmm. And the third one was being a musician. So at the time, I was, like, all into ball. So yeah. I was like, okay, that's the first thing. Like, I got to get that. Absolutely. And I wanted to be that. And, I mean, you know, man, when we were playing at Paul Kane. Yes. I was training, like, all day, every day. You were a workhorse. Yeah, that's all I did. All I did was, yeah. If, so, you, if you were at the St. Albert Rec Center at uh, all, you uh, knew Omen. Omen. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Omen, that was yeah. his home turf. Service plays, baby. That's, he was uh, <laughs> there all the time. The guy yeah. was ball, ball is life. You were the yeah. first guy that I knew that was yeah. like ball is life. Yeah, man. And, that was. And lived it. Like you, yeah. you did it day in and day out. You didn't just say it yeah. as a joke or a fad. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, I put my head into it and uh, and I was like, I, I need to do this kind of thing. And, um, and then at the end of high school, um, just, I mean, with, uh, with the whole thing of, um, the coaches and stuff, they didn't really, um, I wouldn't say I'm not going to blame it on my coach cause I always put it on myself, but right. I, after when there was no ball, I didn't have any offers. Uh, I went to a couple tryouts and nothing, uh, nothing came through out of that. Okay. And then I kind of questioned, I was like, okay, what do I do? Right. And, uh, and it went on as, um, uh, saying, well, I had so many different, you know, teachers and peers were telling me, oh man, you should go play ball here. Mm-hmm. They'll definitely give you, a, you know, uh, a position, mm-hmm. and uh, but they didn't have anything to do with uh, education, so oh, okay. so it was like I either pick my education or I go for ball. And at the time, I didn't have the balls <laughs> to <laughs> drop everything, leave town, and go play at like a small college, right? Yeah. Or um, yeah, so um, and my dad, you know, like with uh, you know brown parents uh immigrant parents yeah you can't just be like hey i'm just gonna go <laughs> dip out of town and play ball and yeah so uh i ended up just going to concordia for for a year and oh, then okay. um, I didn't know that. yeah i went there for a year and uh, and my dad was pestering but oh he's like what's concordia like look at <laughs> look at this guy he's going to u of a he's into medicine and and doing all that okay. and then um and then that motivated me to get into the u of a and uh and then do my sciences sciences degree and you just graduated yeah. last year was yeah it? just in june yeah so congratulations yeah, on that. Thanks, time. yeah, yeah that's I appreciate awesome that. we're yeah. all uh, still in the works of trying to achieve such a feat yeah it's uh, definitely you, know, you all know what how much work goes into getting a degree but, <laughs> yeah oh yeah um, as you were saying sorry before i cut you off yeah it's all good man yeah but yeah and then uh i needed something creative yeah. i guess going back to like the films and stuff you know and i was like well i got music or i got acting and I was like, well, I'm going to try into the acting stuff. So I ended up talking to a buddy, um, and he said, uh, you know what? We should just start our own TV show. And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, he was like, we should start our own TV show. And I was like, uh, okay, let's do it. And so it just came up um, going into different ideas, and um, we watched this video actually on YouTube, and it, it was called The Hero's Journey. Okay. And it's basically about the ordinary man 
who goes through obstacles in his life and um, he overcomes those obstacles. He gets to the rock bottom. And then um, after going through um, tragedies and going through all these obstacles, he becomes his own hero oh, in his own okay. life. And he is transformed from not being that ordinary person, right. but being this hero. And it was the hero's journey. And I was like, and it was like a two minute video. It was like a TED video, like one of those educational okay, videos. Okay. And I got inspired. I was like, yo, that's, that's sick. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Hero's journey. It sounds sick. Like, why don't we take a story about the ordinary guy mm -hmm. who might not have uh, much talent, uh, much skill, and, um, and go into something head first. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. And then from there, uh, went, um, found a bunch of writers, had like hundreds of coffees with like pe random people in like the film yeah. industry in Edmonton. How did you go about finding writers and whatnot? Mm -hmm. What uh, did you use websites? Google, yeah, <laughs> literally Google. Who just was writing like there? Edmonton film industry, um, Facebook groups. Oh really? And just okay. like messaging people, like who do I? And actually putting up Kijiji ads. Actually, that was the <laughs> one thing. I was like, hey, I got a TV show. It's called The Hero's Journey, and I put like this like. Um, I paid one of my buddies, he's a photographer, okay. and he made this really sick, like, um, professional picture, and it looked like a, it actually looked like a movie poster. Oh, um, I've seen it, yes, yeah. it's got half your face on it, right, yeah. and it says The Hero's Journey, yeah, yeah okay, that's the one, Kinda yeah, kind of attracts some people on the app, yeah, and um, that was like, oh my god, like, people were like, oh my god, is this like, some like Hollywood production, <laughs> and so oh, yeah. like, everyone was like, yo, what was it to like, you know, this, and I was like, like in my head, I was like, nah, this is like literally nothing. But it's just my buddy who took this picture and like edited it. And then, um, and then, yeah, that actually brought people to me initially from the ad. I just put that poster, like the, the picture up, yeah. uh, sent it to people. I was like, yo, this is legit and made it. I really hyped it up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when people had coffees with me, they were so excited. Yeah. And then slowly I kind of be like, yeah, it's just two students, like we're just <laughs> like two students, but we're trying to build this thing. And so um yeah and then that's where it started uh had a uh, had uh eventually we had one writer one director um three producers and like a bunch of actors bro like oh, just like really? a bunch like actors well they knew they weren't getting paid right um yeah. but uh, just from hyping it up so much uh -huh. it kind of just got people's interest in it and just like yeah you got you got to sell yourself though yeah mm -hmm. you know and you have to you have to do something to attract people and make them believe and see your project and your passion the way you see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there, you're not going to be able to do that if you kind of just undersell it and just give the plain facts. I mean, that's the thing, man. How yeah. do you, no one, uh, how do you hype up like Apple computers when it started in like someone's garage? Like you can't just two guys. That's everything in starts in a from garage, that, right? like dicking around with computers. You know, you yeah. you have to sell it in some way. Yeah, exactly. And that was the thing. It was like, how do I sell a script that you know a girl from the U of A um, wrote? And we have no writing experience. We just kind of collaborated. Right. And uh, I told them, like I told everybody that like sat down for coffee with me. I was like this is going to get on TV. Like, this is going to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, eventually after, you know, telling the story, like uh, uh, telling them about the scripts, telling, and I guess just from them seeing how hyped I was about it, yeah, they absolutely. wanted to stick around, right? So, um, yeah, and then we, we did a bunch of auditions um, at my parents. We, my parents had a shop in Grandin Mall. They had okay. a tailoring shop. Okay, I think yeah. I, uh, I think I know the one. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now. Yeah. I think I know the one. Yeah, yeah. A couple tailoring. That's what it's called. But, okay. Um, Grand Mall like is just like complete. Like it was deserted, right? So <laughs> yeah. there's like one or two shops, and then everything was just empty, right? So we had these like empty, I guess, rooms. Okay. Uh, right beside my parents' shop, and I was like, okay, we'll just do auditions here. Oh yeah, those this, are perfect. Actually. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And um, so I just like yeah, I just put up an ad, and I told people, and I messaged people. I was like, hey, you're an actor, like there's a TV show that you could be on. Yeah. Like you should come through and the dates for the auditions are here. And it was just me and uh, me and my buddy. And we have no, like no experience at all. <laughs> no way to judge these actors. <laughs> and so like we had like, it was crazy, bro. We had like 40 or 50 like actors show up. Oh my goodness. Wow. First two days, like first two days of audition. And uh, 
they're bringing these their resumes and their headshots and <laughs> have this little like dinky ass like camera set up in this like really like dark <laughs> room i had like no equipment right yeah. and uh, they're giving me they're like hey you know my name's so and so and uh yeah, I just look through them. And I'm looking through these resumes, man. And they've done, like, years of acting experience. They got, like, TV shows, movies. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> Damn. I'm screwed. Like, they probably know, like, this is, like, some sort of... They Cat- probably know, like, it's... Some catfish or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um... That's a weird process, the whole auditioning thing. Yeah. Like, you have to go in there and put on this face and convince someone to like you and to want yeah. you to be in their mm-hmm. film. Yeah, that's kind of a weird. That's a weird process. How and is it being on the other other end of that? It's weird, man. It's yeah. it's weird to judge, like, because I've never had to do that. Right. And I'm not like one of the like. How do I? I'm not even an actor yeah. per se, and so how do I judge this person on how good his acting skills are? It's true. Um. So it was just funny, like just me and this guy, and we're just sitting there watching these guys go and reading our scripts and like acting it out. And you could tell different skill sets, like okay, just based yeah. on how comfortable they were. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you got forty or fifty people, so you get comfortable. So, <laughs> so you yeah. don't judge. I mean, you don't know about acting on an intimate level per se, but mm-hmm. at least you can do a comparison throughout the um, auditioners, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That was that was the thing. You could see the diff- people's different experience, how comfortable they were, mm-hmm. and then. Yeah, we judged them from that. Um, we didn't really cut anyone. There were some some awkward characters that came through the door. Yeah. Uh, uh, but everyone really, we just like had a pile of resumes, like about like a stack like this, oh, and we were like, yeah. "What do we do with this? We got so many people. We thought that we wouldn't get anybody, right? We right. thought maybe like one or two really. people would show up. Yeah. And then we'd be like, "Oh yeah, if they're you know decent and they're comfortable in front of the camera, then they're good. good they got go. the role. Yeah. But then we had a bunch, and I was like, "Yo, like how do we?" sort this out and so i mean it was just a process man yeah i mean uh but at the end of it at the end of the the whole thing we got everything going we had a bunch of people everyone was interested and then um we didn't get the funding for it so the last piece was Mm -hmm. you had to get funding from the government right for it to be a legit project okay in order to put it on um you know like the telus um channel Mm -hmm. or like the the shaw channels the omni channel channel and stuff so i actually reached out to those people and I asked them, oh, wow. I was like, uh, hey, I got this um, great story, this great script. We actually have everything in place, ready to go to film. How do I get it onto your channel? Right. And, you know, a bunch of people didn't respond. But this one lady who works for Omni, she responded and she was like, film the pilot episode and then come right. and, you know, come and set up a meeting with us. Uh, but you need the funding first. So get the funding down, make sure it's legit. And then... Um, yeah, at the end of it, we didn't get the funding. We applied, and it's just a rigorous application. They're not going to give you ten, twenty, thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So, what, what what sort of stuff are they looking for to give funding? Like um, having a director in place, uh, having a business plan. Mm. So uh, making sure it's like no a legit idea. thing. Exactly, a business okay. plan of like, okay, what if you get if we get ten thousand dollars, what to the dollar, what are we going to use it for? Gotcha. Mm. And right. so. I mean, we wrote this <laughs> really bad business plan. I mean, <laughs> compared to people that actually know how to do plans and stuff like that. Like, it's an undervalued skill. It is, man. It is. 100%. Yeah. So we ended up putting a 10-page business plan together. Um, it was really bad, but at the time, it was like the best we could do. Yeah. Um, sent that through. Uh, didn't get the funding. And then kind of as the months went on, it kind of slowly fell apart because, you know, people kind of went and did other shows. Uh, they were on different actors always will get some sort of other gig and then it kind of just slowly and it was tough man because i was playing with people's schedules too right yeah i couldn't always get everyone together at the same time and stuff and gotcha it just kind of fizzled out after and some people were asking me all the time like hero's journey what happened like it's coming i'm like yeah it's coming it's coming (laughs) like just wait like just wait for it it's coming and then yeah so at what point would you say when you're doing this whole process did it kind of hit you and be like oh this is like this is a reality like this is a real this is actually going to be a thing we've gone from just talking about how cool it would be yeah this is a full-on like thing we're making right now did you have a moment like that yeah uh it was when we finished um the scripts uh because at the at the time i had i had like six rough copies of 
scripts okay. and they were like each like 150 pages long down yeah. yeah and so it was like a legit like we had a full story because that's that was the beginning it was like okay well do we have a good story like a good story for a movie or a tv series mm-hmm. and i was like oh and at the time in the meantime while the script was getting made i got those people i got the director i got the producers i got the people in hand and they were ready to go like and we would meet up once a week um at paul kane actually oh, funny really? thing yeah because uh, I, I was able to access a room um and just sit there and have just like a group. Oh, awesome. And yeah, and I, I talked to the janitor actually. I was like, hey man, like I have nowhere to like, <laughs> like have just like a, a meeting. Yeah. All I need is like an hour of like a classroom. And, uh, you know, he's like, yeah, just come through after school, like whenever. Oh, that's just awesome. let me know you're here. And, uh, and then just, you know, sit. yeah. So we had the classroom, which was, which was pretty dope. But, um, yeah, it was that moment when the script was finished and I had the 10 people that were just willing to go. And they didn't want a dime, which was nice. Um, they were just excited about the project. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, this could be a thing. Now all I need is actors. We got the film equipment and let's go. Just start rolling together. Let's just, yeah. That's always an interesting moment when you when it hits you and you're like, okay, this is this is a thing. Like, we're doing this. We're, yeah. We're committed now. It's, yeah. it's a slightly frightening but more so exciting yeah because yeah. you you all of a sudden this whole other path of door of opportunity is just kind of opened yeah. at least that's how i kind of feel when we had it with the podcast whereas when me and tolu were at the uh the music store rental store getting all this equipment together and as soon as i like was going to pay for it i was like okay this is this is a thing like, <laughs> yeah this is, this is happening yeah so that's it's it's always an interesting i always ask people that that question specifically because i'm curious yeah. as to what it was for them that kind of had that moment to realize that it's going to be a thing like right. they're committed now yeah um would you what would you say is like the big challenges or lessons learned coming through that whole experience which was quite a process and i mean mm-hmm. you've done so much and gone so out of your element yeah through that whole process what would you say you took away from that maybe the most uh biggest thing was um actually the fear of other people's um opinion on the tv show okay because when i when I put it out there, when I put the poster up on Facebook and I said that this was going to be a thing, it was nothing, right? It was, it was, it was nothing. And then they know, they, they, they always knew me as like this, you know, just this basketball player who was just mm-hmm. going into university, just this right. regular dude, yeah. not knowing that I have this passion for acting or anything. So when mm-hmm. I posted it, people were like, yo, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> what's going on? How did you get this? Are you still in school? Like what's going on type thing. And so, the moment I put it out there on Facebook and posted it um, was the moment was like, okay, I got to get over this fear and of like people thinking of me in a certain way yeah. and how they're going to react to it. Even if this doesn't become a thing, I needed to, you know, get through that Yeah, and get the, get over the fear of people thinking, oh, you know, what's what's he doing why is he wasting his time always oh, on a tv show what does he think who he, who is this guy like right. what is he trying to do like he's trying to hype himself up or whatnot and um it's that moment where it was like okay well I, I, i'm done listening to other people and i don't care if they like it or hate it no. if it's not a thing if it becomes a thing whatever i'm gonna take that chance yeah. and so i just kind of dived into something that was completely out of my element i was like i'm gonna get over that uncomfortability and just so you're, you're learning all of this stuff as you're doing it, right? Yeah. So what? let's say you have another script, you come up with another idea, and you want to do this process again. Mm-hmm. What do you do differently the second time? Uh, probably get someone on my team who knows how to uh, manage and work around people's schedules because mm-hmm. that was the most frustrating thing was just dealing with people and their own personal life mm-hmm. and their own problems because they're doing it. They're taking out of their schedule to come meet with me, and it's my thing right it's not really their thing and so if i can get people to have as much value into the project as i do see if if the project blew up and it went on to um the 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 tv channel or if it blew up into something would they get something out of it as well not just being you know an actor in it or not just being Mm -hmm. somebody just helping out 
mm-hmm. um, that would be something I would do differently. I would approach it as a, you would get if the biggest reward would be you would get this, this, and this out of it. Mm-hmm. Or if nothing comes out of it, this is what you're going to get out of it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so kind of creating that value uh, at the forefront versus when I walked into the coffees, it was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's this TV show. We got a bunch of writers. Like <laughs> we got film equipment hyping it up where there wasn't really anything there. Back and eventually the when they came, came to that realization, a lot of people uh, just stopped calling me, stopped talking to me and just left. Right. And I didn't realize that I was just hyping something that was nothing. So, mm-hmm. okay. yeah. It's uh, it's important, I think, to make the distinction and say that don't undervalue the. I just want to highlight you overcoming that fear of rejection that you were kind of talking about before Peter's question, mm-hmm. and I think that is a huge determining factor in stopping a lot of people from undertaking their own pet projects. Uh, that fear of rejection, and even realistically not everyone's going to like your idea as you've obviously come to that realization and you're going to have to push through a lot of negativity yeah and that fear i think that's a huge thing maybe to think about um for a lot of people if they've come through a similar situation to get over that fear of rejection and if you do have that something to think about how you can push through that because i would say that's a huge mental block on yourself that yeah. does not need to be there whatsoever yeah and also probably another thing is just that stopping people on top of fear is just this is such a huge thing a tv show or whatever project they're doing i have like you said i have no idea how to do this i'm out of my element i've never interviewed actors before how do i just dive in there it's yeah. it's probably so easy to give up like i'll never figure that out it's too hard yeah it's true so for the after you've done the hero's journey you've kind of dabbled into the edmonton film scene with actors producers writers and whatnot what is the edmonton film scene from your experience kind of like i've never really heard too much about any films coming out of edmonton right it's not really i mean big i mean Mm -hmm. compared to like a hollywood or bollywood or whatever uh, it's not it's not big by any means compared to that but i mean it's it, it's it's growing like uh, like there's a lot of small projects by independent filmmakers, um, and it's actually bigger than what you would expect. There's a lot of people that are interested in in it, okay. um, and there are films that um, from like uh, like Hollywood that maybe aren't like aren't that big or they don't make it into theaters or whatever, but they come here to film. Okay, and um, they need actors, they need extras. And they have like a big named actor that's coming for a week and they need a scene where they need a hundred people mm-hmm. or they just need a couple people walking by. Like it's, it's some okay. sort of like scene. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a, there's a lot of that. So I think I've heard of a, I think it was something, it was like a Jesse James movie and Brad Pitt was in it. And that was like that type of thing. They came through Edmonton. They yeah. Had extras. I remember that going down like a number of years ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. So now, I, from what I know, and I know this because uh, my stepbrother actually moved to Toronto to pursue acting, and I think he just got accepted into an acting school in Vancouver. Oh, nice. I'm wondering now, why is it you didn't, or maybe you did, consider going to one of those more film acting hotspots like Toronto, like Vancouver? Was that maybe, uh, did you not still not have the balls, as you put it, to pick up your life and go somewhere to pursue something or is that maybe something happening in the future actually well at this point after the hero's journey uh i definitely just left everything on the table after that so um the reason i didn't go anywhere to pursue that was i wasn't sure about my i guess capabilities as as an actor uh, because i didn't have you know, I didn't go to acting school and I didn't want to waste my time either. Right. Um, and I was halfway through my degree anyways. So halfway through my biology degree, just did a project, the hero's journey that didn't really fizzle into anything. And it was, okay, do I pack up and move to a Vancouver or a Toronto right. or LA or somewhere where they have, you know, bigger opportunities and just 
get you know just jump ship get rid of, not do my degree and and go through okay and, and go into school or or do I create something use all the resources in my hands and create something or do something here as much as I can finish my degree and then figure out the next step kind of okay thing. so no. it's more of a strategic move you're already in the middle of your degree yeah you know you wanna you got something on the go already there's not really want to cut it off all of a sudden to go out on a whim exactly and, and that and that makes sense yeah. that that makes total sense yeah so that is your intro to acting how you got into kind of film and your kind of experience with it so i want to shift over now to your kind of social media presence which is yeah. now a lot of big focus uh as of right now, what you're doing, as I see what you're doing. Yeah. So you have your, your YouTube channel, which yeah. is just called Omid, correct? Just all caps? Yeah, it's, uh, well, the URL is OmidQTV. So if you go YouTube.com slash OmidQTV, it'll actually pop on my channel. Okay, perfect. But my name is, yeah, I changed it to just Omid. Cause it's... So was this the next transition for you after acting, or was it the music? Well, actually, even in between doing the hero's journey and, like, going to school i was actually i actually started with music before i got into the hero's journey okay um uh, the guy who owns resonate music mike mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sure if you know there's a studio in edmonton they're one of the best studios um uh, shout out to mike uh but he actually had a studio in his basement in grade when i was in grade 12 while i was playing ball uh he actually told me to come through and check out his basement and so we went there and uh he had this crazy setup like it was a really nice studio uh had like everything in it and then he told me he's like oh omen what's your favorite track right now and at the time it was uh she will by little wayne and, and drake okay yeah and they, they were one. just popping off yeah. at that time and uh he's like get on the mic and, and 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 you know spit the first verse or spit spit the whole song if you can mm -hmm. and he's like i was like dude i'm not i'm not a rapper like <laughs> that's cool your setup is dope but like i'm good he's like no 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 just try it like just just do it and i was like okay so i ended up he pulled up the lyrics on on his on his mac and uh i spit it and he and he mixed and mastered it right on the spot and the whole prod like the whole one hour two hours that we spent there and he mixed it and he mastered it and he gave it to me he's like oh just this is your thing I was like, man, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy fun. Like it's yeah. and, I, my, and I actually sound good. Like it sounds decent. That's awesome. And he's like, yeah. He's like, anytime you want to come through, like come by and you know, you know, you can spit a couple of verses, whatever. And so that's where it started. And I never really pursued that. It was kind of on the back burner. Okay. And then I got back into it after the hero's journey kind of fizzled out. I was like, what can I do myself on my own schedule? I don't have to worry about anybody else. Yeah, your own personal It's my thing. own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? I don't have to worry about people coming through. I don't have to be disappointed when something goes wrong because of somebody else. Yeah. What can I just do that I can create on my own? And so that's where the music came in. And then, yeah. And... So you started, uh, was it the music videos and just putting on, was it the SoundCloud that kind of started out? It was actually just pursuing? the YouTube just the YouTube videos, yeah, yeah, and you've had a couple features, um, and I've seen from guys and your uh, and videos on there. Are those local guys as well that you've kind of just met through the scene and they've That's come right. collaborated basically? Yeah. So how have you? Uh, how has that process gone? Like getting gigs and and getting guys to come feature with you and getting your name out there. How does how does one go about doing any of that? Because I have no idea yeah. about any of that stuff. So I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, well, it first started off just me writing in my basement okay. um, and just going through the process of, okay, can I actually rap? Like, am I actually decent at this by right. myself before I go out and perform, gotcha. before I get out out there? And not like the hero's journey where I just throw it out there that I would, <laughs> it was this, this, this big thing. You've learned. I you learned. Know. Exactly. I was like, okay, <laughs> let me work on my craft first. Okay, yeah. And because it's my own thing, let me let me really get down on it. And mm. can I write? Can I actually make a song from scratch? So when I first started, just writing, 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 and then I was like, okay, I'm ready to do my first song. And so I wrote the song, and it was called World Injustice. And nobody knew me as this, like, 
like a rap, like rapping or anything, right? Mm-hmm. But at the time, because I took so much experience from the hero's journey about how to make videos, what goes into making videos, okay, the equipment, things and that, I already, already had the experience to make a video, but I didn't know anything about the audio or anything like that. So okay, yeah. I ended up going back to Mike's Mike Mike now, but at this point he built a, 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 a music school. Oh, in damn. the north side, um, kind of on 137th Avenue, okay, called yeah, Resonate yeah. Music. Yeah. And they he had established himself as one of the best schools in Edmonton to go to. Every year they get voted like number one. or Damn. Yeah. And so I went back to him and I was like, hey, I took what, what we did in the basement and now I actually have my own song. And he's like, yeah, come through and, and, and record it. And... At this time, he's got a big studio, really, really good equipment. And so I made the song, posted it on Facebook, and I made the music video with uh, another guy. Oh. And um, edited it, made it all really nice, put it out on, on Facebook, and it got like 70, 80, 90 shares and like 13,000 views Holy in total. Damn. And I only had like three videos on my on my YouTube yeah. One was the Hero's Journey trailer that was really dorky and, <laughs> and crappy. And then another like trailer video that I made and then the Hero uh, the World Injustice. And it just exploded, bro. Like the, the message was good, the lyrics were good, the video was decent. Mm-hmm. And then that was my confidence saying, Okay, I can do this. You got this, mm-hmm. yeah. I can actually do this and people people actually like this song. People are downloading this song. <laughs> Like downloading it, like it's a listening. weird feeling. It's right? weird, like, man. Yeah, like listening to you. That's how I felt with the with the podcast. Our first episode, you know, I was like, our first episode, maybe like 20, 20 downloads. Like, I'd be happy if we break fifty. Yeah, breaks fifty like the first day. No way. And it's it's up like near one hundred and fifty right now. Like wow. it got a strong start, and I was like holy shit like yeah people are actually listening to us like, <laughs> yeah. what the hell? it's so strange yeah it's it's a crazy feeling man and then and that was my first song and i was like oh man like okay i can do this yeah now let's put fire on the flame so i ended up just writing 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 um going to the studio i actually didn't have enough money to go to the studio um so i made the song and then i was like okay well i can't i can't pay you know a couple hundred dollars for every song yeah how do i go through and make enough content for people to actually get excited about me so i ended up learning about mics ended up going to uh, finding places that offered free studio time yeah. and uh trying to learn everything but i realized that i can't do everything on my own mm-hmm. it's, yeah it's true to some degree you have to yeah. reach out so yeah man and then i just went i uh, went through that made a, a bunch of songs on my soundcloud uh got good at that and then and then actually just in last summer i did my first performance okay wicked where was that at i think uh, i saw a post about it but i can't remember yeah it was at the the naked cyber cafe on uh, it's like right across from grand McEwen. okay it's a wicked. little cafe nice and uh, it was actually held by other local rappers that had um, their ep out and they were like hey do you want to like come and open and like you know do some of your songs damn yeah and then we actually had a song called What the Hell. Um, okay, yeah, I listened to that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched the video too, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So we made that, and that was just before their gig. And they're like, yo, should we... Because that popped off too. It got like 2,000 views on Facebook. Oh, nice. A bunch of people supported it. They liked it. Mm. And then they're like, yo, we should have performed it in front of all these people. And so we had, that was my first gig. I was like so nervous, bro. I was just like... Oh, I could have never. That was my biggest fear, like getting in front of people and rapping. It's very yeah. different... Uh coming from sports because me and you playing on basketball team yeah we p- would play in those those final games at, in front of hundreds of people yeah like a ton and it wouldn't be a thing to us yeah it's just whatever you're playing sports you just yeah. play and there's a shit ton of people watching you yeah. exactly but when you have to do something with some showmanship and rapping it's like this huge like nerve-wracking experience and it's kind of like just you on the stage right you don't have this whole team exactly. if something happens all the attention's on you yeah so if you mess up People are going to see that and they're going to judge you. 100%. Uh, so, um, yeah, and it was like I was literally shaking in my car when I rolled up to the Naked Cyber Camp. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> 50 or 60 people here. You're going to ruin their 
their night. <laughs> you're gonna come through and you're gonna, you know, choke and you're gonna put your head down and you're gonna leave. Like, what are you doing? You aren't. And I had spent hours, bro, just preparing three songs, just looking, at, like, just in my basement, just rapping my three songs over and over and over and over again, just so that I don't don't blank, blank out. don't yeah. blank out. But when I got there, right at the door, I was like, oh my god. You could run. Like, you could leave right now if you want to. You could, you could go. You don't have to do this. Why are you putting yourself in such an uncomfortable position? And I was like, no, like, I can get through this. This is my fear. It's just fear. This is all good. It's just three songs. Get through it. Ended up doing it. It was really good. Got over that. And it was like, wow, this is I actually wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah. The mm-hmm. fear, I had blown it into something that was crazy. Yeah, way bigger than it needed to be. Way bigger than it needed to be. So... How did, uh, so after you did that performance, did you see uh, any bump or rise in your popularity in terms of your social media presence or anything like that? Well, the biggest thing was, was like, I noticed that a lot of like uh, artists, when they go on and perform, when you go and watch them, you don't really know who they are. Right. They just get up on stage and they say, hey, my name is so-and-so, and then go at it and then they spit. Mm-hmm. They might be the greatest rappers or like they're crazy skilled but the, at the end of it, they just, you know, everyone's like, man, that guy was really good. But they don't know who. Yeah, who is he? Who is, who is that, that guy? guy? Like, and then they just go and that's it. Yeah. And you might never see that guy again. So I realized that I got to separate myself from that. Okay. I want people to, when I come in and I do a performance, that they know who I am. Right. So I ended up thinking, okay, how do I do this? I can't have a big setup on the stage. It's not my venue, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So I ended up. Like thinking about okay, what about these big rappers? Like, what do they do? Or these big artists? Okay, what do they do? And I realized the merchandise they sell T-shirts okay. with their names on it. Okay, yeah, right. Or they have some sort of slogan or something that relates to who they are. Creating a brand for themselves. Exactly. And I was like, okay, it's my personal brand. It's me, Omid. Mm-hmm. I want to get people to know who Omid is. So I literally just went to West Ed. Got my name on a cool font. Got one of the custom, a custom made T-shirt, and just and that's what I rocked for the like my last three or four performances. Just my name, O M I D, with white letters and seven eight zero at the bottom. Nice. And nice. that actually got me Instagram followers wow. and Facebook yeah. followers and people following me on Snapchat just from that, bro. Because they didn't realize who I was. They're yeah. like, this guy's really good. He's got really good songs, but. I would get girls, Instagram, Instagram followers from girls that came to the show because they were able to search up my name. Mm-hmm. And that was just from that t-shirt because they can't hear, you know, they've had, a, there's a couple performers right. that come through. This guy, this guy, this guy. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, it just says my name. Oh, Every right time I'm, there. my name is Omid or whatever, like yeah. just going up and down, like, you know, and, I, and I'm pointing at my shirt, letting them know, like, this is me. Search me up, like Damn. just little things like that got me uh, one or two followers here, one or two followers there. World of a difference. It's a world of a difference, man. We're taking. I hope we're taking uh, cues and ideas right now. <laughs> We've been trying to brainstorm small, effective ways to kind of make our own brand, and definitely merchandising kind of came up in the works mm-hmm. um, as well. Uh, just the nature of the new album cover we want to get. Yeah. Um, it could be parodied and spoofed a lot, which would be really great to make a multiple different designs for shirts and all, all that good stuff. But yeah. That's crazy to hear that just that one instant change. I thought you were going to say that you had shirts available to buy. No. But it was just no. the one. It's the one shirt. I have. I don't got the money right now to, to, to be able to fund that, right? That's true, right? But, so I had to think of the most effective way... But simple but effective. Oh yeah, Absolutely. low cost. That is uh, that is definitely something we'll have to think about. I mm-hmm. definitely want to do some kind of merch sizing. Again, creating a brand is super important, and something you're really lucky that yours is very simple. Like mm-hmm. it's just straight up your name, all caps. It's easy to market. Like you can just slap it basically on any design mm-hmm. that you could ever want. Tolu. Mm-hmm. Do you do all your music uh, producing yourself? Like, do you make all the beats? Have you reached out to anyone to make your beats? Because I'm looking to make a connection here. 
Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely open because I don't make my own beats. Okay. Uh, I just strictly just write. And so always looking to, to work with people that know how to make beats and know how to do mm. other skills that I can't do myself. Right. And so, like you mentioned, you realize that you can't do everything. Sometimes you're going to have to reach out. That's the thing. Yeah. So? Yeah, I mean, the our little setup, I think a month before the uh, podcast we have been uh, talking, obviously, about, you know, rap and beats. And you know how, you know, black black dudes are just talking so much shit. Oh, I can't rap. <laughs> oh, mate, oh, you rap? Okay. Okay, we've been talking a lot of stuff. Let's finally, you know, just rent some some stuff from Long McQueen. Shout out. And uh, and get something set up. And then my, uh, my best friend back in BC, we started out in the same type of, you know, uh, going to to church with our parents. Our parents were, were pastors, so we were always there way too early. So we would have to, you know, just pass time. So yeah. we ended up teaching ourselves uh, bass and guitar and drums and piano and blah, blah. And we had, I remember they, the church had one MacBook then, and it was and there was garage band on it. So I'd follow my mom to, like, the uh, woman's prayer on, like, Saturdays. In the morning and go and like work on some on some stuff here and there and then like i'll work on some songs and give it to my friend who will like t- take it home blah blah and we'll listen to it actually just i think last summer oh really like from like eight years ago and it was horrendous yeah. just <laughs> terrible just pretty much talking with auto tune on it just terrible but anyways this guy ends up you know g- getting the this gig somewhere impressed the right guy who got him this gig somewhere impressed the right guy who got him this internship at sony oh wow with like like in like in, uh in vancouver getting to work with just you know people are pissed my pants if i was in the same room right with. Mm-hmm. so and now he's just you know just every other day he's got you know the whole squad and everyone wants like putting out music is producing people and blah 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 so uh, and while so in, in this first year of that was when I went back to BC because I moved here and I started I was like man like I haven't played piano or done any, mu- any music stuff in the longest time I kind of want to you know get back into this so then I saved up for for the uh, MacBook and started doing it and since then he's been you know guiding me through I remember the, the first song I recorded I like I put it all, all up together, blah blah. Then flew out to BC to see the girlfriend, and stopped over at his studio. And from I got there nine from nine to two to eleven was doing a bunch of stuff. And then from eleven to two p to two a.m. I was just there. And ten minutes in, he was already telling me me a things. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna grab a pen and paper just one second. Yeah. I was writing down all these tips on like mixing and producing and. Yeah. You want to use this compressor, but not that. And I'm just like, mm, okay. Mm. Yeah. Like, I didn't even have time to ask any questions. Right. And that was, this was, you know, last, late last year. And since then, uh, myself and the other two guys in Ebb and Flow, Simba, uh, I create, myself and Simba uh, make our beats and, and, uh, and produce them. And then Chache is the rapper in the in the group right, right now. So he acts as a good practice. Ian another new artist we all got rex leffler so both of them are are with us now and we you know they rap we produce and we could do so much better right but but again it's a lot of uh it gives us some something to work with yeah and we actually just put out our first uh first ebb and flow uh track oh, it's really? out on uh on on SoundCloud, on Apple Music, on Spotify, and all so of that. So you all collaborated on on one track? Uh, no, uh, this is uh the first single that's made it to those pl- uh, platforms by our new by by our newest artist. Oh, okay. Rex, yeah. So it's uh, it's been good. And again, you know, it's like the the biggest thing I like ten I like telling people is like this is all you know YouTube knowledge and secondhand stuff and practice it and figuring out you know what uh what works but it's definitely like 
I mean, it's his still second to school, but there are times, man, when school takes a, a backseat and you're just in oh, there yeah. just taking a good 10 hours just trying to make that one thing click. And once it does, yeah, you're just on top of the world. And then you'll put it out and 10 people listen to it and you're bummed. By the back of your mind, you're like, nah, man, I fucks with this. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. doesn't I matter what when, I was, when I also thinks about it, man. This was a lot of hard work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. no knowledge gained in music pro production or rapping or any of that is lost because ultimately you can use it on something else. Yeah, definitely. I had one song that I spent like three months on, three or four months on every single day. And I was like, because I was by myself and I was mm-hmm. mixing and mixing yeah. it and trying to clean it up. But I wasn't happy with it. Mm-hmm. And I just kept going back over and over and over again. To a point where the girl that was featured on it, she was like, "Like I'm losing it. Like, <laughs> like this, I don't have no interest in this anymore. Like, put it out." Yeah, yeah. And I thought it was gonna just be like this, like banger, masterpiece, right? Yeah. Like masterpiece. Like I'll release it on SoundCloud. It's gonna, you know, blow up. This is gonna go viral. Like this is it. <laughs> and then it got like a horrible response. Oh, damn. yeah. So you can't like I. I feel like artists they are so you can't be attached mm-hmm. to the art. Mm-hmm. You got to detach. It is It is definitely just difficult. It it's is. so hard to just detach, but you have to. So I remember uh, the uh, last uh, I put up, because Austin James, this guy from Vancouver, this big uh, mashup artist and just ridiculous amount of followers and all that. He does, you know, ma- mashups of like high dance type beats and raps. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'll test my hand on this. So I put put up a video on Instagram of a mashup with a Muramasa beat and designers freestyle, oh. and just like a uh, 50 second thing, and then next next night, no, just likes, 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 views, views, views. This was just just two weeks ago. No way. And I get like a good 650 views. What? And I don't even have like that many followers. Wow. Just you hits, have like hits, 34 hits, hits. <laughs> <laughs> I keep just, tabs. <laughs> just hits and hits. So I'm like, all right, well, this is going to be a full song. I'll work on this the whole week. I'm not working. This, this will be it. So I go ahead. I put it into work on Friday. I release it. 20 views. Ouch. <laughs> like, yeah. Bro, like, where what was, happened? Where was all the hype? Yeah. And it definitely, you know, you should be able to kind of rap. Uh, wrestle that but it would affect you like it will affect you inevitably but I feel like again like I've been doing this for a while while now so it's like all right bounce back get on the next thing because you can't predict what people will will vibe with or what will will blow up you just have to keep doing it well yeah that's that's the thing there's one thing that I would take like if, if there's any advice I could give anyone is one not be attached to the art that you make whatever it is podcast video you know art paintings whatever because to you it's never going to be perfect you're always going to sit there and be like ah there's this thing that i can change or that thing i could change and i know artists the one reason that a lot of edmonton artists don't actually blow up or actually get anything (laughs) is because they don't have enough content for people to be to get hyped about they get that one song after six or seven months and people are, they go crazy for it. You know, they get, you know, like you said, six, 700 views or like a thousand views, likes, whatever. And then they're hyped. But those people that just listen to your track and you promoted it so much and you marketed it so much, when they go on your channel or they go on your SoundCloud and they see you only have that track, they're not inclined to follow the page. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, he just has one song, whatever. They're not really confident. They can't go back. Exactly. They can't go through your catalog. Whereas when you look at these big artists, J. Cole, Drake, Kendrick, any of these up and coming rappers or artists, you can go on their page and they'll have 100 songs, 30 songs. They have videos, they have this, they have that. And so that will, it almost gives you credibility Mm -hmm. in your field. It's like, oh, this isn't just like a one-time thing. Right. They have something that they can go back to and actually connect to. Because they might not like they might like your song, 
and then they click on your page just to be curious to see who you are. Mm-hmm. But then they go to your next track and they love it. Right. Okay. And they're like, oh my God, this is so good. Then they go back two years and they see another song and they love that. And then all of a sudden now they're emotionally connected to your art because you have a track record. Exactly. So that, that, that makes sense. And that's definitely something I wish we kind of did when we launched this podcast. Um, a lot of uh, I've looked at a lot of online articles that were suggesting, you know, launch with like four or five episodes, so mm-hmm. people can like when they look at your stuff, they have other things to listen through and go through. And unfortunately, I don't know if that hurt us too much. I mean, it's it's really t- tough to say, um, but definitely not doing a couple things like, for instance, one and it's still. I stay awake at night sometimes thinking about this. It kills me. When you launch a podcast and you get on iTunes, essentially what happens is you have an eight-week grace period. And if you get enough um, good rates and reviews, you get on the new and noteworthy on the front page of podcasts. Oh, nice. And it's very easy to get. You only need like 10 five-star reviews or something like that. Like it, it's nothing. They don't check it to make sure she- sure it's legit you can just get friends to do it and we unfortunately missed that window oh and apparently that's like one of the number one things you want to do to help launch your podcast when you're starting out so unfortunately we missed that but even now it's nice to see when someone comes through and listens to one of our episodes they can see yeah we got like 12 other episodes that they can can kind of dive in and see oh i really like this one oh these guys are talking to a uh, guy who's in fitness and personal training. I really like that. Like, this is a really good episode. It pertains to me and my interests. Yeah. Because not every episode that we talk about, it's not always going to be relevant to the listener, which and, makes sense. Because that's like the first thing you do when you discover a new anything, right? New artist, new musician, new podcast, whatever. You go to their channel, you go to their page, and you dig through all of their stuff. Or at least that's what I do, right? If I discover an artist... I'm going to go to their YouTube channel, sort by most viewed, move through like the first few videos on there. And if all they got is one, it's gone. Exactly. Don't remember. That's true. It's, uh, it seems to me that the YouTube subscribers is one of the hardest things to get. Yes. I don't know. It seem, it's, it's almost like when someone subscribes to you on YouTube, they're like invested in you. Yeah. And it's kind of funny how you walked us through the mind of a YouTube subscriber and what they see and think and feel when they go through your page. It's really interesting. And it's something that I think I'll try and think about putting forth content and adjusting our YouTube page and trying to reach out to people to come listen to us, which is, it's, it's definitely a process and it's taken, it takes a while to gain traction. I mean, the hardest thing I think is to reach outside that bubble of your Facebook friends. Yes. That's like the hardest thing to break that and break out into people who don't know you at all. They just know you as your project. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to try and focus on this summer is, like I said, making a brand and expanding it. But those are, I think that's the biggest thing that's an obstacle, I guess I would say. It's the exposure. It is. It's it's really tough to get the exposure. And actually, another thing that killed me, um, what happened was, this actually kind of relates to what you and Tolu were just talking about. We had uh, our first interview uh, for the podcast was Zach Palak. And it was, uh, it was he is um, a personal trainer for powerlifting and sports performance. Okay. So I was really excited because it was something completely new that we don't really talk about. So yeah. it's nice to dive into something else. Um, obviously, first interview, super excited. We do the interview, go super well. Like, like, man, that was so good. Like, I'm so excited. I was hyping it up. I'm like, this is going to be a really good episode. We had, I think our first one was already cracked 100 downloads. The first and second one were, one was at like 73, the other one was at 50 something. So like, this is, this is going to be big. This is like going to launch us. And the site podcast.com that we were hosted on, um, they transferred servers and it screwed up and we weren't able to upload any episodes. 
Oh. So we missed our window. Kills kills the momentum, right? Wow. It killed yeah. it. And it was messed up for a good while. I was emailing them, like, trying to figure it out. And it really sucked. We got the YouTube uh, video up. That got, I think it was at, like, 57 views. So that's so that's only a time, really, the YouTube came in big. Yeah. Is that people would could refer to that if uh, we are troubles on other ends. But we had that. Uh, problem and then i had to switch us to a different service um which was a uh, podbean which we're on now oh. and unfortunately we went from a free service to a paid but i'm still happy that we're on this now because we have a whole bunch of analytics that we can see um, oh nice. basically you know what platforms people are downloading from uh the geolocation so we have mostly i think it was like 227 from canada over 100 from the u.s Oh, nice. We got, um, I think, 10 or 11 from the UK, 6 in China and Serbia. Just they some got, crazy like, out there Mala- countries. Wow. Malaysia, Ireland, Costa Rica, Spain. Wow. Australia now. Yeah. 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 It's so, and those are just also our download count from our previous site was lost because we had to make a new, a new feed. Oh. So I'm not, those aren't incorporated in our current download count. And I'm not able to see where those downloads came from, unfortunately. But that was the big thing. Uh, Going back um, to to what happened uh, with that interview episode, it released late, and it didn't it didn't do so well. It didn't uh, it didn't blow up like I thought it would. It was only you know like 20 views or downloads or listens in the first week. Granted, the uh, the YouTube video did really well, but it was just nice to see like hard downloads like of course yeah on, on the count and right now it's for downloads i think it's at like in the 40s it's 42 it's our highest one since we've moved um to to podbean but it was definitely sucked i was super hype on this like blowing us up and we lost our momentum and ever since then we've kind of been just struggling to get that momentum back and it's mm. been coming back like for sure but yeah it's definitely i feel like it could have been better yeah, you always feel that way with with some stuff. Some stuff you're like, this is going to bang. Mm-hmm. This is going to bring us to some some other level. And then it ends up being like one of your worst yeah. projects ever. <laughs> yeah, but, that's true. Yeah. So to flip over to back to your kind of YouTube channel, because you've done stuff other than music. Yeah. I've seen you start to do some skits. That's right. And yeah. some other videos. Um, how did you... So I see... I guess this is you kind of veering back and diving into kind of the acting a little bit again. Yeah. And so how did the how did you decide to do skits and how did that come about? Uh, it actually didn't even come through for the acting. It was more coming back to what you said, exposure. Okay. So it's like I wanted the music to be the main thing because it was something I could control myself. Yeah. How much I could do. Like if the harder I work, the more content I put out, is all on my hands. Mm-hmm. It's not on somebody else's schedule. I don't have to wait next week to film something. I don't have to wait for this person or that person. So I was like, okay, well, I look at the artists in Edmonton and I look at, okay, we're all, the people that I know, we're all kind of on the same level, rap skill wise. Right. What am I doing differently? Why aren't they blowing up? Or why aren't, they have great skill. These people put out, um, there's artists that you don't know that are you're like, holy, like you should be signed. Right. Why aren't you? What are you doing wrong mm-hmm. that a mainstream artist or another independent artist is doing right? Mm-hmm. So really dive, dove into that. And it was all exposure. It's all exposure. You might be the greatest poet, the greatest artist, the greatest doctor. You could be the greatest at anything. But if nobody hears or sees it, you're nothing. So like, okay, well, how do I get exposure? And at the time, well, even now, a lot of short skits, vine vines were popping at the time. Okay. Short, you know, I, you guys probably know who King Batch is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you guys know that? I don't yeah. know. I'm oh, not okay. a big social media guy. I have oh, okay. to be now trying to promote this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm kind yeah. of new to this world. He's the grandpa of the group. He, yeah. He, yeah. He, <laughs> is, it, is it on the YouTube? Still yet? Called, yeah, <laughs> the YouTube. He looks funny. <laughs> Yeah, so I was looking at all these other people that were doing big things, getting numbers. So I look mm-hmm. at numbers. 
how are these guys getting these big numbers? And it was, I realized it was just these short, stupid skits. That, 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 that are relatable. That are relatable. Mm-hmm. It's like awkward handshakes mm-hmm. or awkward social interactions. Don't get me started, man. Yeah. Just... And I'm like, <laughs> and a simple video will get half a million views, a ton of shares. And I'm like, but my music, I spent three months on this video. Right, yeah. What? Like, why? So I was like, okay, I need to get back into this. Mm-hmm. And I liked acting. I like skits. All right, I can do this. This is easy. Like, yeah. if this is what's popping and it's so simple, I got to do it. And I don't care if people relate to me as a rapper mm-hmm. or they relate to me as an actor. Because I look at a guy like Childish Gambino. I was just about to bring that up. That's what you're reminding me of, right? Exactly. <laughs> the dude does everything. Yeah. He writes. He acts. He goes on tour. He sells merch. The guy writes for TV shows. Like, he does everything. Mm-hmm. So... Half of the people relate to his music, but the other half relate to his writing. The other half relate to his acting. You might not like his acting. Yeah, plus but... he has a stand-up special too. So it's like there you go. Mm-hmm. The you dude know, does everything. Do you know you how see... hard you have to work to get a Netflix stand-up special. Yeah, yeah, it's like, hard time. <laughs> it just doesn't make any the sense. The dude probably doesn't sleep, which is my thing. And a lot of I've mean, I've talked to a lot of artists here that I wanted to collaborate with, mm-hmm. and people that are doing kind of the same things. And I'm like, yo, let's. Let's do skits together. Let's do this, do this. Nah, bro. I don't want to be I don't want to be portrayed that way because there's rappers that want to hold this persona of being that gangster rapper mm. or that this I don't want to be in the comedy skits because I don't want to be portrayed as a comedian even though they have the funniest personality. And yeah, they would be it's... amazing at skits. They don't want to do it. That's interesting. It's a different it's a different time, and I know you're not going to be able to see me because this camera's out. So we're using you're that, like young Jamie that, right that now. One. That's okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, no, it's it's a different time where you definitely have to whore your yourself out. Mm. There's so many things I like used to rip on people for for doing. Yeah. Like, oh, you're such a social whore. Just stop it. <laughs> and now I'm out there doing that. Just you know, just kissing dried asses. Just trying to. <laughs> Like one of it was the whole, uh, uh, you know, with re- refreshing your feed, deleting, you know, things that maybe weren't that that hype to like keep the consistency for people coming to check out your uh, your stuff. I used to rip on people for that, but I mean, you're so unoriginal. Yeah. You know, keep that stuff, blah blah. But it's like if you have a brand you're trying to sell, you need to go into it with that mindset. Yeah, exactly. And then with like like you know with the. Uh, with the uh well I want to be strictly music or strictly this or strictly that. There's so many King actually no, I don't know if King Bash does that much music, but there are a lot of guys who do skits but they're bumping their music in the skits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or it's like, oh, uh producers in the in the studio like Yeah. But exactly. that's just a chance for them to plug their own thing it's exactly a million it. views and it's, it's a like, strategy oh, download link here it's like wait i thought this was a skit then i thought we got our mp3 <laughs> download link just yeah. ready to go on the side so it's it's a different time i i do understand people who have that mindset but you know take this from me you kind of have to you have to be flexible oh yeah right? it, it, you have to look at like you want to get the most exposure as possible mm-hmm. What's working right now? Mm -hmm. And what can you do? Right? Like, I can do the skits. No doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing the skits, I actually, for a good, like, month, I didn't want to do the skits. And I knew in the back of my head, I had to do it. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, like, your music, you could could be the greatest rapper in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't matter. Because Mm -hmm. music is looked at differently. I feel like there's a lot of resistance Mm -hmm. For a new up and coming artist, definitely, you know, definitely. you he might be like, you know, you go on his page, you're like, ah, like you're already going in with a negative feel for an artist. There's definitely the issue of, of you know, like like fans or would be fans have such a short, uh, I could call it attention span, but also loyalty. Yes, where it, it, it's like, oh, you know, uh, Omid blow. 
blows up and it's like, man, I've been listening to his stuff since day one, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, but a thousand of you are saying that, but I only got 500 views. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> like, what's exactly. up? And yeah. once you blow up, everyone's like, yeah, I'm on this. Like with, uh, with Mumble Rap, with the whole Lil Yaddy stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's like, man, trash. I was like, listen to real old Jesus and this and that. <laughs> Six months later, everyone's like, yeah, all my friends are dead. Oh. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. just on. And it's so, it's like, you have to, it's, it, it kind of goes, it goes against the old school way of, of thinking of like, you know, stick to your thing, no matter what happens, you know, to your left and to your right. Don't even look this and this and that to adapt. Yeah. And Gary V, who, you know, like you can, uh, some people like him. I know like Gary him, I found <laughs> Gary V through his page. Yeah. And, oh, really? <laughs> you introduced me to him. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, nice. And he is, he's one of the, uh, the first guys that said, he said something that, uh, that I found interesting, which was the case of, oh, when we were growing, growing up, people were like, man, stay in school. Don't go on your computer or TV after school. You know, that is not the way it is done. It'll suck up your brain. Don't play video games. This is the way it's done. I don't care. It's like, but Charlie is doing No, I don't care. This isn't that. But now these are the kids making money off of Twitch. Yeah. Just sitting there doing their art. There's a kid, kid, there's a kids who did not go to any media school of any kind, but are teaching you, their parents, how to work an iPhone. Yeah. Because you're out there like, nope, I don't care. Nope. Just home phones. Right? And it's like you... You you have to just you have to go with the times, especially now that technology and the internet is a thing. Exactly, everything is changing so rapidly. You're you're not in control, but you can go with the flow. Exactly. If you're not riding that wave, mm-hmm. you're literally hindering yourself. Yeah, it's sticking to something that isn't working. Mm-hmm. Right, like you're you're doing you're you're making your music, but you're not you're just focused on that. You're not focused on the marketing, or you're not good mm-hmm. at marketing. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. <laughs> you learn. Learn. Learn how to market yourself. Learn. Because you, if, you, if you're just telling me you're going to be the artist mm-hmm. and you're going to have a career in music, how many artists are in Calgary? Medicine Hat. Toronto. How many want to actually make it? Mm-hmm. How can you mm-hmm. say that if you're, you're putting one song every six months or three months? And that, that's the one side with, and I talk again, this is, I feel like I could keep talking for hours uh, about this now that you've unleashed this uh, can of worms. Oh, it's fine. We <laughs> but, have no but, uh, so, and again, this past month, uh, which is actually this month, April, May, sorry. So all this month of school ended in April. So all day this month has just been spent at, the, at my place or Simba's place, full studio setup, just grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. Right? And we talk about, man, what goes through a guy like Kanye's head who he had free education because his mom was working at the school. He was doing, you know, Dece or whatever. And he's like, nah, screw it. I want to drop all of that and do do this. And then he failed. Came back home. You know, mom, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. But still went ahead and went full and dropped everything. Yeah. Right? What goes through guy like two chains mine who who uh who had a full ride scholarship he had a ball blah blah but it's like nah i'm gonna make more more money rapping about holes and weed and stuff than i ever made being being you know a harvard grad yeah and sure enough he does but for all those guys there's 10 on the side exactly and for producers especially uh atlanta you know, like spots in the States and if you're in Canada then Toronto and Vancouver is kind of like, you know, if you're trying to to a breakthrough, you want to be there. And I definitely think if you get a chance and you're at a point in your life where you can make that move, you you should. Yeah, definitely. But, but if you're not there yet, there's no excuse because, again, there are many P people there and how many of them do you see blowing, blowing up? It's the skills and the things you learn here yeah. that will help you you there. Yeah. They're going out there like all my friends are producers. I'm going to make A or B here and, and future here and do this here and do that there. Everyone around me is this. They're not going anywhere. You're coming from, 
from a place where a country beat might get more more views than your hard work trap trap beat that you know that all your friends will vibe vibe with, with. Yeah. and the mentality you'll get from from being a you know loner being in the desert by yourself will kind of help you when you go into the saturated market definitely man. is what i think anyway definitely yeah i would have to say um the one one of the gary v videos that i watched that i found i don't know if it was on your page but i got to his page through yours um what i really liked is when he was no you sent me this Mm -hmm. this uh he sits down with this 30 something year old artist of some type and kind of just gives him advice for like i forget how long the interview was and the biggest thing i took away from that was document don't create and I feel like some of these things you're preaching is kind of saying that as well. Don't spend six months on a masterpiece. Just document, throw up content all the time, all yeah, the time. Definitely. And to branch off back to what you're saying about, you know, the Torontos, the Vancouver's, mm-hmm. Atlanta and all that. I'm a huge believer in go where opportunity is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do not ground yourself to some place just because you were born here, you went to school here. Loyalty. You like no people here Mm -hmm. if i get a job tomorrow to go work at some tech startup in seattle i won't be here anymore (laughs) see you you later i don't think (laughs) any any comp site may uh major has loyalties to his or her place of birth at all (laughs) you gotta go where opportunity is and there's a lot of opportunity even just around you if you're willing to look if you're willing to do the skits to That's do the, the features you got to put yourself out there for the exposure yeah which is kind of what you've been preaching it was all exposure man mm-hmm. yeah i i though i actually didn't want to get into any of the comedy stuff because mm-hmm. i didn't want i didn't just didn't want to do it mm-hmm. you got like seven thousand views on facebook though on one of those yeah on actually the more recent ones yeah my biggest my biggest video mm-hmm. Which is on uh, a page called Afghan Memes. Mm-hmm, yeah, so there's an Afghan yeah. Memes page. Yeah, they were sharing those or the posting the videos. Also. Yeah, the biggest video I have to date has fifty-seven thousand views. And how do you <laughs> even get your like? Do they contact you? Do you contact them? Actually, funny thing is, I contacted them uh-huh. for the last two years. Down. Last two years on a not a, on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. But... So I sent them a message when I made my World Injustice video mm-hmm. in 2014. Was when I was like, "Oh my God, this is this is a song." The right? people need to hear this. The people need to hear this, right? And how many Afghan rappers are there? Yeah, exactly. Like, barely any. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna go to every Afghan relatable mm-hmm. page and message uh, them mm-hmm. and say, hey, 'Hey, I'm an Afghan rapper from Canada. Mm-hmm. This is my work. J- just, just you know, take a look at it. And if you and like paste, it, send, just send, share send. it. Yeah. I never would say, "Hey, share this page.' Yeah. I'd just be like, "Hey, if you like it, you know, share some love." You I know? did the exact same thing just yeah. last week, like twelve pay pages too. That's honestly, that's how you have to it's do. Like, it. Hey, man, if you like it, you know, share. But I'm just, I'm just doing my thing over here. Exactly. <laughs> you have to, you have to, especially this this day and age where everything is connected. Yeah. And so I would, I sent, the, I sent the message. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a response. Mm-hmm. A month or two later, I sent another same same sort of message. Yeah. Kind of shifted a little you bit. Change it different up. different link. Hey, uh, you know, artist from Edmonton, Canada, mm-hmm. Afghan. You know, share some love. Yeah. The guy responded and said, "Okay, I'll take a look at it." Looks at it, he loves it. He's like, "Oh, this is great, man!" He's like, "Better than what I've heard mm-hmm. from other Afghan rappers." I'll share it. So he shares it. Uh, a month later, I'm like, "Hey, man, I got another video. Mm-hmm. Do you mind sharing it again?" And he, if you like it, share it. And then I kind of, over time, I kind of built this relationship with this guy, oh, nice. and I would message him during like times like. Um, Ramadan or mm-hmm. times like uh, you know here just, and there just, just the hey, classics man. yeah yeah I'd be like hey have a good Ramadan have a good you know eat like oh. stuff that's like related to our culture oh, I thought you were gonna say like I was plugging my my stuff then no, I, I, no, I didn't no, even no think plugs. about the just hey and yeah just networking. I was like hey man where are you from? I'm just curious like where yeah. are you lo- like where are you from yeah what, yeah, what yeah. province are you from from mm-hmm. Afghanistan like were you born in Canada blah 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 and so I just de- developed this relationship yeah. kind of months later and then this last year every week i almost sent him because I, I saw that he was sharing my stuff mm-hmm. so it's like every week i was sending him uh i started you know going on my grind i was like okay he's sharing yeah, yeah, yeah. this is great he's got sixty thousand followers he's on doing his, page. his part let, let me do exactly he's like just send, he's like just send me your stuff i'll share it so every week i'd send him something he's like dude 
he's like, you know what? I'm going to just put you on this page and make you an admin and allow you to just share your stuff. Did you like Damn. die twice? <laughs> and I was like, it was like, just boom. Like, Holy. I was like, oh my God, like opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent two years developing mm-hmm. this relationship. Yeah. Damn. Relationships are, are so, I mean, I I didn't, I, th- I think I tagged you in it in the, again, Gary V, uh, where he, his, one of his recent videos, it was like, all you guys going on like internships, the biggest things you'll think you're going to get is like experience and learn opportunity, blah, blah. Knowing people. It's like, no, network, network the hell yeah. out of yourself mm-hmm. because let's be honest, they're probably going to get, get you grabbing their coffee and stuff. Yeah. But it's that guy you went out with that was like, yo, I remember, I don't remember your name, but you're a pretty hard worker and this and this, that. you want to, this is that, and then yada, 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 you'll yeah. get there. And that's why, again, the more you do, mm-hmm. the better. Of course, Where you're doing because of this success with skits. Now, inevitably, your music will get attention. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Where with this podcast stuff, one of the reasons we were so excited to to do it was okay. A totally, you can plug your uh, your B tier, and if there are other people who have stuff, we plug them. They share us. We it's build a relationship. Network, we start this thing, mm-hmm. and even you know, there's a lot of of uh, of uh, friends I have in in BC doing this kind of uh, stuff too, and I've thought about even have it you know, even if it's shorter one one on one interviews, yeah, and I'm throwing it up on the startups then, just okay. so again building connections. It's like Absolutely. I don't know who you are, but I know you're Tola's friend from Edmonton, right? Yeah, this isn't that. What about this? And that is how it starts, and I'm not gonna get there by staying at home making beats all all day yeah no yeah i'm not gonna get get there by sending an an email with only links if i'm not you know saying hey well what's up happy ramadan on this like i didn't even think about that that part of all just the like you know casual casual day, interaction because yeah, interaction. you're always yeah. focused on yourself yeah you got to focus on the person that's it actually, is, on the other side, it is difficult, why man. he owes you nothing exactly to share your to yeah, share your exactly even if it takes him two seconds, he owes you nothing. Yeah, yeah, and it's like I get people actually sending me messages mm-hmm. on my Facebook. Hey, bro, I'm Edmonton. This or I'm from here. Yeah, yeah can you share my stuff? See ya. Yeah, I look on your page and you have one one song that sounds decent. I, I don't I, care. And honestly, <laughs> it is super important. And this just might be my biggest takeaway. That's why I'm kind of like hamping on it so much is because because in my head, I'm like, okay, I know this guy doesn't owe me anything. I know this group, like Majestic uh, ca- Casual, they have millions of, fo- fo- of followers. Like they don't need my remix or mashup of this and this and that. Mm-hmm. But I'm out there, you know, sanding just a casual, like super humble, you know, me- message. And I'm thinking that's enough. Mm-hmm. But... According to you, past that mm-hmm. is working on a relationship. Yeah. Exactly. Not not just oh, like I'm being humble, but just pestering because they're probably getting a lot of, of those, but not a lot of yo. I vibe with this stuff crazy hard. Well, I, this. Another thing is too is you got to think of uh, like Gary V when mm-hmm. he says you give, you give, you give, and then you get. So mm-hmm. the idea is you provide value first to the person you're trying to connect with. Mm-hmm. Before you ask, mm-hmm. before you get. Mm-hmm. So it's like, for example, like if you want to work with, uh, thinking of my own stuff like videos mm-hmm. or music, you know, for example, if you if there's an artist that has a big following, mm-hmm. instead of saying, hey, bro, like I'm a producer from so-and-so, can you share my stuff? Say, hey, I'll give you all my beats for free. I'm going to send you all my beats. You have non-exclusive mm-hmm. rights. Just use it. Yeah. Don't even ask for a share. Mm-hmm. And just build a relationship with him. And that's what, like, on SoundCloud I started. Because, again, man, you, when I started, when I got into this old beats then, I would go up on YouTube and search blah, blah, type, type beats. I'll say a high beat. Every single related video has, like, thousands of views, mm. right? In my head, all beats get high views. 
Yeah. And when you start putting out your stuff with 29 views, <laughs> you see all the related videos with 29 views too. Yeah. And you're like, I didn't know this part of YouTube existed. <laughs> like, I thought, you know, we we're going to be hanging out on the, you know, thousands <laughs> of views part. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what? I want to ma- ma- make this this mine. I want to slap my tags all over it. I want to make sure that like, no one can steal my stuff, blah, blah, blah. Two weeks in, I'm like, yo, like, this stuff ain't even that great in a way. I, I should be out there trying <laughs> yeah. to spread it. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Put a, a tag in the beginning on, like, the uh, middle. But on SoundCloud, I'll make it free to download. Yeah. So you don't have to, to go through any oops or whatever. It's there to download. Even if, because in your head, you're like, well, in my head in a way. I'm like, if they can't download it, they're, they're forced to play it. In which case, I get plays on SoundCloud. Right. But again, no one owes me shit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. It actually goes a longer way if they can down download it and on their way to a school be playing it, writing bar bars to it, decide exactly. to rap over it. Even if they don't give me anything, there's a nice little tag in the beginning to talk me. Exactly. And it becomes a thing. Mm-hmm. And that was. It's it's honestly you. Right now, I feel like well, I got this this the, like I got this going i'll be good in two weeks i'll be like i didn't know anything back then and then two weeks again like every single step i feel like i'm learning something new and that's only by doing it exactly that's only and brandon gave me because i asked everyone like what do you think about me All uploading beats and this and that and like yo man it's gonna be hype it's gonna be great I look to Brandon, who's just the realest person I know. If you're looking for a nice slap in the face to you know, <laughs> sit down, be humble. Keep it real over here. That's it, it's like, I'm like, yeah, man, what do you think? It was like, well, um, two to four years. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what are you? It's like, yeah, about two, two to four years for you to, you know, to really know if this is uh, if it's going to be a thing. Yeah, for a couple thousand views. I'm Definitely. Like, like, I'm, do not expect this. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah. I mean, Just have some, well, have some faith. I'm, I'm making fire over here. That's, <laughs> that's the thing, man. People aren't in it for the long run. Yeah, no. And if Absolutely. you're not, you can't. You got to think. Of, I think six years from just from myself, right? Myself, yeah. not anyone else. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be between six to ten years. I gotta put. I gotta eat shit mm-hmm. for six mm-hmm. good six years before I get any 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 relevancy. You know what I mean? So, and like I said, yeah. the biggest thing with all of this is you don't blow up, you don't wah, wah, whatever. You can still get gigs editing exactly. videos. Yeah. You, you, you can get gig. Oh, people like the, this guy more writing for for him. Like nothing gained in this. This isn't. And I hate to go back to to our video games because there are people who are good at it, but I'm trash at video games. Like FIFA, I'll just take L's, then I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go and practice for a week straight. Go, go, go. Start building computer, come back and take more L's. And then I realize all this time should probably be, be spent on something that, you know, even if it doesn't work, even if it doesn't whatever, I get something out of it. Exactly. And if I play FIFA for 30 hours, that's not translating to shit. Yeah. <laughs> if I go on YouTube and get tips for 30 hours. Like, even if all I can do is beginner co- co- uh, courses are one of the things that also motivated me where people are like, this is not a professional course. This is just for beginners. Yeah. And you go through it and it's all stuff you know, but people are paying for that information and knowledge. I told you about people getting paid 40 bucks an hour to teach old people how to use an iPhone. Damn. How to call and send texts. Damn. I'm like family. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when I grind in, you're out there telling people, oh, you just press home and uh, that's 20 bucks right there. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what? So no knowledge gain is lost. My mom all, uh, always said to me, everything you know is something you can teach someone else. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And if you're in something you're doing, if, if for you it's video games and you are good at it and you know there's a market to teach p uh people great for me it's piano and this you know music stuff mm-hmm. and i know okay even if things don't work out whatever i'm like in bc now i'm going on tuesday i'm going to be looking for for churches and whatnot that need help with uh, piano gotcha and all that 
and it's uh it's such a it's such a a big thing to have at the back back in your mind is you have to be in it for the long haul. The comforting thing to help you through that is hey, if it doesn't work out the way you plan, you have way much more in your arsenal than and than someone who didn't pull put in the work at all. Absolutely, man. It's it's it, you got to see it as a business. Mm-hmm. You can't just be the artist, or you can't just be the software mm-hmm. guy. You know what I mean? If yeah. you want it, if you want it, if you see that reward, you have to be the mm-hmm. business guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to see it as a business, not just like you said, videos, video games. Mm-hmm. If you're playing video games and that's your thing, put a video camera. Yeah. Put it up on YouTube. Switch, man. People literally just sit there gaming <laughs> for hours. And they just talk about where they're going in the game or how they're doing it. Or what about reaction videos? Reaction videos, same thing. It's mm-hmm. but the thing it goes back to exposure. It mm-hmm. goes back to content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You upload that every week yeah. for two years yeah. because you're naturally just playing FIFA. Or you're naturally playing this game. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you have fifty thousand followers yeah. on your YouTube, and you're bringing revenue just playing video games. And you have a part time job at Subway mm-hmm. or full time job at Subway, whatever. Splash. All of a sudden, that's a second revenue <laughs> revenue stream. <laughs> That you just naturally yeah. doing it just because you like it. Yeah. Same thing goes back to the music and the videos that I do. It definitely weeds out. It weeds out the people who aren't in it. To, oh yeah, that's to, it does, man. It does to last. It shows a level of commitment too and accountability, but a lot of people fall out of that because it's accountability for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people need someone harping on them to make sure that they're doing something consistently yeah. all the time. Yeah. So it shows a lot of character. Mm-hmm. Discipline. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I actually did the Twitch streaming and marketed myself and did the whole video game Back streaming. in the day, Grandpa? Oh, for uh, quite a few months, actually. On your Windows 98? Back in, uh, <laughs> back in the day. No, this was, uh, I think, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it it was it was a grind. Like I think after three months, I had like a fourteen people who like watched me religiously, mm. and it it was one of those things. I ended up stopping because I just had so many things going on that I didn't have the time to sit there for like six seven hours a day and stream. Yeah. So it was kind of a decision that mm, maybe this doesn't fit my lifestyle right now. Mm-hmm. School, girlfriend, getting Sports a job in the that. summer. Yeah, absolutely. It just wasn't fitting. Yeah. I kind of regret that I didn't still dabble and do some streams just here and, and there just mm-hmm. to keep it alive and going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to see kind of what what would happen and where would it be, it be today, but it's definitely it was a big lesson for me on how to market myself cuz it was just me sitting there playing video games, being comfortable having people that I can't see at all watch me and type on the chat mm-hmm. and be entertaining in some degree and kind of interact with your viewers and stuff like that so yeah exactly. it, it was value valuable experience mm-hmm. for sure yeah. um i think the last thing that we'll talk about is your video production company that you have yeah what yeah. was it it was q q films q films yeah so you said you were doing um i th- saw somewhere weddings weddings bunch engagements of stuff. yeah i how do anything you, how did you get involved in that did that kind of also kind of stem from hero's journey your knowledge that you attained from that? it was honestly from the years yes yeah. exactly dabbling with video dabbling with cameras mm-hmm. and then um yeah just this year i was like i need money <laughs> <laughs> so i have the skill mm-hmm. and so if people need videos done mm-hmm. i will do it for them as as side cash honestly that was that was about it and the you know the music and the videos my own creations are what my focus is on right but the video production company is just a thing where if somebody needs something and i you know i can make you know a couple hundred bucks here and there Mm -hmm. that that's there networking too and networking Mm -hmm. too going to events i mean it, it doesn't help why am i limiting myself yeah exactly it's true i got the skill people need it it's a service I got to put it out there. Mm-hmm. I get gigs once in a while. I get probably maybe once once a month, mm-hmm. if that, of some somebody needing a video here and there. It's good money, but a lot of people fall into the trap of, you know, doing services for others, mm-hmm. right? Like you're an artist, you you produce beats, and all of a sudden you open up a studio or you strictly sell your music. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I tried. I'm trying to stay away from is like, why are you going for the short-lived money? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
it's because a, they see the money and they're like, oh my God, okay, yeah. I got to start my business. Yeah. I got to do something. I mean, there's a, a lot of money in videos, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People pay $2,000 for a videographer for a day to come and film their wedding. Yeah. And I could I could do that and yeah. I've done that. Uh, and you see the money and you're like, oh my God, okay, I'm going to start this Screw business. This. Screw this. <laughs> jump jump ship and, and, do, and start a video production company. But I was like, no. Nah. What do I love the most? I love the creative stuff. I got to keep this as the focus Mm -hmm. and not put that all my chips into that. Whereas I know I'd be successful in it, Mm -hmm. but would I be as happy? Mm -hmm. Probably not. And even so, you would also, I mean, yes, you'll make the first, you know, big pay paycheck, but you put in as much time as you put into your music and videos. I feel like at the back of your mind, you will know, I will have to put in all this work again into this. Yeah. Like, I'm not just going to be getting 2,000 dog gigs every month yeah. and be balling. Like, yeah. this is, am I really about to drop all the work I've put into everything else to do this? Or am I going to focus on my thing and, you know, use this as a supplement to yeah. to that like the videos are? It's a supplement. Exactly. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. exactly it. So, to close off, absolutely, there was a ton that we kind of went through today. Hi. Could you say... Would you like to drop drop some knowledge for our viewers who are looking to gain exposure, create their own brand? Is there anything that you could kind of tag on this video and say, you know, if you're going to get anything from this video, yeah. from my story, from the hero's journey, right? <laughs> what would what would you say? You know, going back to everything, it's execute and just create as much content as you can, and don't be worried about doing something different that might help your cause Mm -hmm. and feeling like as though that's going to define you because if you love what you do, you're going to do anything and everything possible to make it happen. But if you're not willing to step out of your own bubble and -hmm. look at what is working online on wherever, then you're just limiting yourself. So I would say to anybody watching this, hearing this, is to just obviously grind, make as much content as you can, but don't limit yourself to your focus. Mm -hmm. Allow other things to be supplemented and allow that to be your success. I mean, if I didn't do the skits, I wouldn't have that many views. I wouldn't have the subscribers. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't be supporting my music. If I didn't do the video company on the side, I wouldn't have that extra thousand dollars that I could go to a studio and pay a producer mm-hmm. to, you know, make that song. Everything ties into it. Every little detail that you do, putting your name on a shirt, it's your own name. People were telling me, that's stupid. Why are you putting your own name? That looks dorky. <laughs> it's the little things that you don't want to do that people look at yeah. that is going to get you on top. Yeah, the things, things. things you have you you would never think it would You would never think about. Mm-hmm. You would never want to do. I never wanted to do the skits. Mm-hmm. I never want to put my Omid on my That's my name. That's my You're birth name. You probably roasted people for doing that in the past. Of too. course. I roast <laughs> I roast people that that were doing the skits long ago. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? That's yeah. so stu- it's such a stupid video. But it has half a million views. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. It has half a million views. If it's stupid, it's working. Why aren't you doing it? And so that's one thing. Just execute and do things that you might not want to do, mm-hmm. but it's going to help you in the long run and, su- and succeed. So. Love Word. it. And whoever said no new friends is completely wrong. <laughs> I, don't I don't know who made that. Yeah. I mean, Seriously. going back just to what you're saying with keeping things intertwined, all your businesses kind of relate to each other in some way, help each other kind of keep running and, and, and grow. We like to keep the people that we bring onto the show, we like to help them grow and keep their businesses intertwined with us, obviously, um, whether it's through advertisements or, you know, if we're trying to do some giveaways using some clothing from uh, Ben Cop and his uh, his clothing line, Cop Designs, or we need another outro song uh, for one of our episodes, and hey, let's get an Omid Tolu collab and get you some exposure, <laughs> so... He heard it. He's the only one that needs to, <laughs> <laughs> needs to know. You're good to go. Perfect. Okay. So we had a bit of a hiccup there, but to end the episode off, we're going to have some plugs so you guys know how to get in touch with Omid, see his stuff, check out his videos, his music, his vlogging, video production, 
he's going to hit you up with all his plugs right now. Absolutely. So you guys can check me out at facebook.com slash thinkomid, O-M-I-D. And uh, check out YouTube, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash omidqtv. Uh, both of those I upload on a weekly basis. So, yeah, check it out. Show some love. And for the startups, you can uh, get in touch with us, likes on Facebook. You'll see all our new uploads for episodes. We also post some articles and interesting things related to entrepreneurialism on there. Jeez, that's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, YouTube as well. Go and subscribe on there. This uh, video will be up on there, this special edition episode where we have a video to go along with the audio. So subscribe on YouTube as well. We're on Podbean. If you have a Podbean account, you can uh, follow us on there and also download all our uh, episodes from there as well. Just all podcasts in general. And finally, iTunes. Give us a rate and review on there. And subscribe to our RSS feed on there, and you'll have all the episodes auto-downloaded to your phone. Yes, sir. So once again, Omid. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for talking to us. Thank this you, sir. by far been my favorite episode. Oh, thank you, man. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Yeah, it was amazing to talk to you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, guys. So I appreciate you guys. we're going to slide on out of here. Thanks for tuning in, mm-hmm. and we will see you guys next time. We've got the Omid song coming up in yes. three, two, one, and we're dead. <laughs> <laughs>
Our chemistry is symmetry, melody from the first degree, flow smoother than some Maybelline, feel you cut man it's made to lean, and I'm feeling myself this major leagues, it's rap day but I'm overseas, she calling cause she think I'm Lebanese, pockets full like the Arabis, cause we be these are foreign trees, Persian gold with a Paris tease, bank accounts full of Swiss cheese, life goes on a trapeze, man I'm Hercules with a rapping please, Ian Curry's Kyrie for three, filling my plate now it's on the low key, filling my cup now it's closer to sweet, okay they want homemade I'm fading like Kobe, Play with the records I'm playing like one day Don't get it twisted, I'm not in for money My tummy is hungry, I need the bread somewhere That's high at a subway, it's time for the upgrade Caviar dinners and drinking like sinners A winner, a winner, just look in the mirror My jacket with zippers, I'm in it like thriller Feeling myself cause the vision on point Do it for change so it ain't about coin Call up Aristo, we killing the joint And we finally ready, don't ask us to join It's all about levels, on me with the stamina Sick as the illest, you know I'm from Canada Bronx in Atlanta, I'm driving a panda in Copacabana